All right, guys, weapons free coming at you here. Uh, we're going to do a, a disassembly and assembly on the 157, the Crossman 157. And um, I know that there's some older videos out there that are hard to see that talk about the disassembly. I don't know if you could see the model number there, but this is similar to the Crossman 150. This is the 157. So this is um, actually shooting the .177 caliber uh, pellet. So we'll go ahead and tear into this and then we'll kind of go through some steps on exactly what what's the best way to do this. But the first thing we're gonna do is start, take off the grip panels and then we're gonna take off the, um, the uh, actually we don't even need to take the grip panels, we're gonna take off the uh, the lower and then we'll get into the upper and then get the valve and whatnot. So here we go. Take out the back screw. I always keep it under pressure with my thumb like this, pushing up towards the barrel because there's a, a detent and a spring for the safety. So I always put my thumb in that little groove. It works out nice and you can really kind of apply pressure as you're taking out the front screw as well. Okay, and then with pressure that I use to hold my thumb, I'll tilt it back up vertically like this um, so that you don't lose the spring in the detent. So you can see there's the detent for the safety and um, just set that aside. This is where the uh, CO2 cartridge goes. We'll take that off because we're going to need to have that off later. And then um, what we're going to do now is take off the rear sight. The rear sight, actually, the bolt goes all the way through down into the into this retaining cap, which is the charger. So we'll take this out, then we'll take off the uh, the cap cover. And there's a screw down in there underneath the um, the bolt that needs to come out as well. So we'll remove that, and then this entire uh, barrel assembly will come off. And so we're going to go ahead and do that now. What I like to do is put my finger on the end as I'm unscrewing it because this is under pressure. There's a hammer and a spring there. So I always put my finger as I'm um, taking the, the rear sight screw out. Okay, rear sight and screw is out. We'll set that aside and then we'll slowly release the pressure on the hammer and the, the spring. And then also the end cap for the breech will come out and we'll set that aside as well. And this is the hammer assembly with the spring. We'll set that aside. Okay, next we're going to take off this, um, this cap and slide so we can remove. Actually, you could do it... Um, I like to take this off just one additional step because if you're going to do a rebuild, you need to replace that that washer on the end of the bolt anyway. So we'll go ahead and uh, switch. We'll switch uh, sc screwdrivers. This is the Wheeler. I use the Wheeler 152-854. I don't know if you guys can see that on there. The one, the 152. That's that's a real thin. And it's in the Wheeler kits that you can get online. And it fits in that screw really nice. So we'll take that out. Set that aside. We'll slide the, the breech cover off next to the screw. Then what we can do is we can slide the bolt back. It's a lot easier to get to that screw. I'm going to switch back to the larger. To the larger. Um, this is just the one I like, but it will hold, it will take a bigger, it'll take a bigger screwdriver. This is the wheeler. 
548-424. It'll take a bigger one, but this is kind of like my general all-purpose go-to. Okay, so we're going to undo that. And then we can set that whole barrel assembly aside with the bolt still in there. We don't really need to take that out. On a rebuild, you'd slide that out and pop in your new your new washer. But this has already been rebuilt. It's already got the new washer on there, so I don't need to do that. So we'll just set this aside. One thing you want to be careful of on these is there is a rubber uh, grommet spacer that helps to seal the air coming from the valve up into the barrel. So I always like to take that out and set that aside. That's a new one there. So we'll just set that aside there. And you can see that the that's the air that comes up out of the valve from the CO2. So, and then this is just, um, that's, I'm not sure that, oh, that's, I'm drawing a blank on what that's for right now. Oh, that's the screw that we just took out for to attach the barrel to the air, the air cylinder. So this is the air cylinder with the valve still in there. And what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about this is actually the hardest part of the whole process. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, take a break, gather the, the punches here. Well, actually, we can just we can get right into it. So this little uh, retaining pin here needs to come out for the valve assembly to come out. So the way I do it is I have these gr this Grace punch set, which is really great, made in America. If you don't have uh, a Grace punch set, or drift set definitely get one they're 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 really well made it's a top quality product and the two punches that i use to get that that pin out is there's a larger one the 564ths punch it's the pp-2 grace and then the 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 one that i use to pop the pin out is the grace pp1 1 16th punch so these are the two these are the two punches here that you need. I'm trying to hold them up so you can see the hopefully you can see that. And um, so the way I do it, and I'm hoping I can catch it here on camera. Uh, if not, I'll just walk walk it through and then talk you guys through it and show you how I do it. And then um, you know we'll we'll go from there. But that's that pin there kind of retains the the air valve in the air in the air tube. And so I use the larger punch, the the 564th to depress the the there's a I forget the official name of it, but there's a a piece that the hammer hits in there which kind of opens the valve and it's not much bigger than the end of this end of this punch. So you kind of have to line it up on there and then what I do is I push it against I put the pin facing down away from me and then this is where we're going to be accessing with the smaller punch to to pop that pop that that pin out so what i like to do is i face it down i'll put it up against my chest and i'll line this this punch up on that on that uh pin that's in the in the air chamber it's on the back where the hammer strikes get that lined up very carefully and then what i'll do is i'll push it against my chest um, and then it just slipped off there. So this this is the hardest part of the whole thing. So I'll push it against my chest really hard once I get it on the top there. And then I'll take this smaller pin, run it down along the side till I hear it hit bottom. Then what I do is I take my gunsmith hammer and I'll just tap it till that pin comes out. And there, it dropped out. So hopefully you saw that and you heard that. Then I'll pull this pin out, take pressure off with my finger on the larger punch. And so this, this pin came out. And that's what retains the, the valve in there. So again, I, I put the larger punch uh, on top of that pin, push it up against my chest um, with the pin facing down. After I get that all the way depressed, I'll just drop the thinner punch, the the 1 16th punch down right alongside of the other punch and take my gunsmith hammer, tap it, and that pin should fall right out. 
So that's the hardest part. Then the next part, then we set that pin aside. Then the next part is just drifting out the valve. Now the valve can be hard to get out, uh, depending on if you have new O-rings in there. So one way to do it, I have this um, this um, Delrin uh, butcher block that I use. And so you can slam it down on that um, muzzle end because it's going to come out the muzzle end is where that, that valve assembly is going to come out. So I'll attempt... Okay, so on this air chamber, there's a very small, uh, about a one-eighth size hole that sits, um, you know, between the where the where the uh, the valve goes and where the hammer and the hammer spring go. So what I like to do is take a cleaning rod. It'll fit down through that, fit down through that um, that shelf basically that's in there, and that'll pop the, the the valve all the way out. So then here's the valve right here, and then we we can talk a little bit about the valve. I'm not going to go through, but there's there's other parts in here. This one's just been rebuilt and it's really working great now, and it's it's a real thumper. But this is that this is that um, that um, piece that we need to depress to get that pin out. Okay, and that's what the hammer what the hammer is hitting to release the the air that's in the chamber to um, up into the barrel to to you know push the projectile out. So anyway, so. We'll go ahead now and we're going to put it back together. So one of the things you got to remember uh, if you are going to rebuild it is you've got to cinch down this part here so that this hole that's threaded, which is where the grip goes, and this air hole are exactly 180 degrees out. They have to be 180 degrees out from each other. So that's the grip um, thread hole. And then this is the hole where the air comes out of the air chamber up into the barrel. So you can take some uh, non-marring pliers. This one's on there pretty tight because I put a new O-ring. You can see the seam right there. But even if you mar it a little bit, get some like 200 or 400 uh, grain uh, sandpaper and just you can smooth it out. But really what makes it tight going back into the air chamber is that O-ring right there. So anyway, to put it back, we're going to go ahead and um, slide this back into the, the air, air chamber. And the key here is we've got to make sure that the the air hole that has the washer and the the air hole on the on the uh, the valve line up, okay? So and so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go ahead and put the valve back in. Um, it goes with the with the rod facing towards the hammer. So breech in, come in from the breech with the valve. And what I like to do is just kind of get it lined up so I know that 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 the the air hole from the valve is going to be pretty much lined up where it needs to be on the barrel. So we'll go ahead and slide that in. And it's going to be, we're going to need to take the, the cleaning rod to push it back in there. Okay, so it didn't line up, so we're going to have to kind of manipulate it a little bit um, to make to get it all lined up. And this is where I like to use a pick set, and I don't have my pick with me right here. So let me go ahead and um, we'll just pop it out and we'll do it again. All right, so we're going to walk through a procedure. So as we're pushing down this this striker pin that's in there, to pop the pin retention pin back in. We got to be careful because the valve is going to want to push out as we're pushing on that. So one of the things that I like to use is a, a dowel, wood dowel. This is just a paintbrush without the brush on it. And I'll put that up in the valve and put that down on the table. So that gives me some to hold the valve in place as I'm popping the pin in. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and Put, put some pressure down, you know, upward pressure on the valve as we go ahead to work the pin in. So what I like to do is get the pin in place, put it in place. I've got something to, to provide resistance against the valve. Now what I need to do is get the, the larger punch on that. And you have this nice viewing window here that allows you to line it up. So once it's lined up, we'll go ahead and depress it while we're putting pressure on the 
the valve so it doesn't slide out, right? So that's that's key. And again, this window here gives you a nice view, and you can actually, I don't know if you could see the, the striker pin in there that we're trying to push down while we pop the pin in. So I'm going to go ahead and push, put pressure on the valve with the dowel. I'm going to push down on the the pin once I get it lined up. Of course, this is the hardest part, getting it through that little window where you can see the viewing window where you can see where it's at. Okay, so I'm on. And I like to use my thumb, so once it's on. Okay, so I got my thumb on there. I'm going to push it. Make sure it's depressed all the way. And this, again, like I said, this is the hardest part. And then usually a tap with the, with the hammer, the gunsmith hammer, to get the pin in flush is a good way to do it. So I got the pin in. Looks like everything's good. I'm just gonna give it a nice, good, swift tap on there, make sure, okay, so it's in all the way now. It's nice and flush. It's in, and everything, the air hole is lined up. I just need to kind of get it in a better position there so it's lined up. So we're good. The valve is in, and everything is lined up. Now we're gonna go ahead and complete the rest of the assembly. Okay, so once the valve is in place, you can kind of see, I'll shine a light in there, that the the, the striker or whatever you call that, the valve, I, I'm drawing a blank on the name of that, but it's just barely above the shelf that's in there. So that's how you know it's in, in the correct location and that you got the pin in the right place retaining the valve. So um, it's just a little bit above, maybe like a, an eighth of an inch sticking up past the shelf that's in there. So now we're ready to go ahead and put all the other components back together. Um, remember, we've got that that um, spacer, that O-ring that needs to go there to keep the air from leaking out. So that goes there on the on the um, the hole from the air valve inside the air chamber, and then we can go ahead and put the hammer and the hammer spring back in place and. This has to line up, so this hole is the threaded hole for the rear sight. So that's got to go in there as well. So we'll, and we'll kind of walk through how to do that. So once we have that kind of put together, um, before we get to the next phase, we're going to go ahead and put the, the, um, the breech cover on. So this kind of slides on, and there's a screw that goes right into the screw on the on the breech there or on the bolt so we got to line those up and put that put that back in place and i can tighten that down later and then there's the there's the screw that attaches the barrel the barrel to the air chamber there um so I've got the right, I've got the right uh, screwdriver head on there. I'm just going to get that seated down there, so it's easy to to work it into position. All right, so we got to put the barrel back on the air chamber, and the key here is we want to make sure that the the washer, the O-ring there, stays in place between the the air chamber and and the barrel. So I like to just kind of get get it lined up, put some pressure on there, and then try to get that screw started. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take this uh, plate off of here just to give myself a little bit more room. Back the bolt out, and then that way we can really make sure that that screw gets started good, going down into the air chamber. And it looks like it slid a little bit, so we're going to realign it up and the, the screw slid into the barrel. <laughs> I don't know if this is the magnetic one. I don't think it is. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to dig that out here and get it, get it lined up. Okay, so I think we're lined up there. Okay, I can feel it tightening down. 
and I'm just going to turn it to make sure that the that that o-ring is there and it's in place so I could see it it's in place so I'm happy with that and then I'll go ahead and uh, cinch this down a little bit tighter that screw I'll cinch that down a little bit tighter snug it up all right so then now we can put the uh, we'll slide the bolt forward slide the bolt forward and we'll go ahead and put the the dust cover screw in we got to get we got to get the, the hole lined up and one of the things on this you want to make sure that the hole on the bolt is facing up so it needs to be facing up I don't know if you can see that there's a there's a hole there on the on the on the bolt and then we want to come in with that up and we want this this here um, so basically that's what you need to do so that hole there on the bolt and then we're going to go ahead and thread that back in so we'll thread that back in okay it's going in I'm going to put the smaller the smaller um, screwdriver on there to snug that up okay so we got the the barrel back on with the the barrel screw down in there flush the bolts back on there and then now we've got to focus on this back piece here with the cover and then the rear sight and the screw and that'll hold everything into place so we'll go ahead and place this on the cutout faces towards the bolt or the hammer like that then the we just got to make sure that 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 hole is lined up there for the rear sight screw and then we want to make sure that we've got that all lined up there so um, what I like to do is just kind of get through this first one first okay and then once it's through that one just kind of make sure this one's lined up pop it down and then get the this is my smaller screwdriver here but at least I can get it going get the threads going and you'll be able to feel it when it grabs I think I turned it Oh, there it goes. Okay, I think it's going in now. Yeah, it's gone in there. So it's captured. So the bolt's captured. And then obviously the rear sight's going to, it's a little off-centered here. I'm going to switch to my other, my larger bit. So get that one backed off and kind of recentered. So this is just kind of eyeballing it right now. But that screw is used to adjust the rear sight. Okay, so I got the rear sight pretty much eyeballed in center, but I'll have to test it later. And then the barrel is attached to the air chamber with the valve in there. And then obviously now we can put the, the air chamber cap. Well, actually, I'll leave that off because I'm going to put put a air cylinder in there so we can test it after we're all done. All right, so then the final step... Now, sometimes this will um, misalign where the front uh, grip screw goes. So what I like to do is take a, a punch, one of the smaller punches, and just kind of reposition it to get it lined back up. So it's lined back up there. And then, um, so we set the rear, the, the grip aside, and we talked about how it has the, um, how it has the, um, the safety spring there. So this, this, this right here is a good place to put your thumb to kind of keep pressure up against the air chamber as you're putting it all back together. So I always keep this piece facing up so I don't lose the spring. And then I bring this, the, the, the whole rest of the gun um, to, the, to the grip. And I kind of get it like lined up where I want it. And then I'll ro roll it onto the lower receiver you know making sure that 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 safety spring is still there obviously there's a detent detent ball under there so um i'll go ahead and roll it on there and the other thing too is you're also fighting this right here the the um the the bolt release that spring is not as strong um, but this is the one that everybody tends to lose and there's detent balls in there. And actually this brings me to a good point. 
get yourself some extra detent balls if you're going to start working on these. They sell this kit on Amazon. It's a great kit. And it's got the ones that you're going to use the most are the 2.5 and the 2 millimeter. And there's 80 and 90 of them each in here. So they're they're great to have because you will you will lose these detents. And then there's also a spring kit uh, that you can get on there with the smaller springs. But that's that's real important to not lose that because there is a detent ball under there. So what I like to do is bring keep this upright, bring the barrel assembly onto it. And then just kind of get everything lined up and then roll it on there. Okay, I, I didn't do that very, very smoothly. Get it on there, roll it on there, and then put pressure right here with my thumb and hold it like that. Now I can see right now that this, this back one is, is misaligned. So I'm going to just kind of slowly work it where it gets realigned so I can get a screw started in the front. Looks like it's lined up. And I don't see that spring peeking out there. You can't see it, but I don't see the spring peeking out. It doesn't look bent, so I'm good to go, I'm good to start these uh, screws in there. So I got that one lined up. Drop it in. Get the screwdriver. Get that one going. I always like to do the back first. I don't know. It's just how I've always done it. I got I got that one in there. Pretty snug. Okay, now I'm going to do the front. And on this one, sometimes I'll just take the bit out and just start it by hand. So get a better sense of feel. So I don't strip it because it is aluminum and it will strip. That's the threads that we showed earlier that's in the, uh, that's on the valve. So once I get it started by hand, then I'll put the bit back in the driver and I'll, I'll crank down on it. And this one, make sure this one's tight. Okay, so got it all back together. The only thing left that needs to be placed on there is the, is the, the cap for the CO2 compartment. But I like to uh, check the safety, make sure it's working, cock it, and it does, there is a, you know, there's a good um, click there. Then obviously make sure that the hammer spring and everything is functioning, that the bolt release works. You can hear it releasing. And then obviously the, the final check is with a CO2 cartridge. So I'm going to take a break here, go get a brand new CO2 cartridge, put it in there, and we'll do a final ops check on it. All right, so we got the uh, new CO2 cartridge in installed, and this will be the function check. So we walked through all the steps. Um, the breech is empty. It's not loaded. There's no pellet in there. All I'm doing is just cycling it. So I'm going to cock it, and then I'm going to um, just run some air through the chamber. So you can see it's fully functioning, and it's uh, working great. So this is all rebuilt, put new seals in it, and real happy with how it came out. Uh, I'm going to be doing some more work on this one, one final more function check. And you don't hear any air inside the gun leaking. You don't hear any hiss. There's no sound coming from the gun right now. You can put your ear up to the air chamber, and if you hear air, then the gun, there's something wrong. It's not sealed it needs to be rebuilt or there's something going on inside so there's there's no no sound emanating from this gun at all so it's 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 ready to go and um, these are so much fun to shoot i love love shooting these they're very accurate and they do pack a punch and um obviously this is an older gun it's got some patina on it and such but they're just they're just great and um there is uh, a part that you can place on this barrel that I want to that I want to show you guys that you can um, you can mount a scope on and so what I think I'm going to do at this point since we've already gone through everything on this on this uh, rebuild for this 157 I'm going to go get my my other one that I've basically redone and gone through and show you because I, I have a, another site um, pick a tinny rail that I want to put on on this one, but I'm going to show you that other one 
before we, we finish up today. So I'm going to just pause it real quick here and go grab that so I can show it to y'all. Okay, so uh, we just got done doing the disassembly and reassembly on the 157. This is the 150. This is a 22 cal. And this is a hot, this one's hot. It's got a cartridge in it. But I wanted to show the rail system. So this is uh, Pyramid Air sells these, and it fits on the, the barrel. And so it gives you a rail up on the top. So um, the sights, the original sight, the front sight and the rear sight are still on, still on the gun. You just can't use them um, when you put the rail on because the, the bracket that's on there. But I'm just going to leave those on. I'm not going to mess with that. So I'm still trying to decide what I want to put on the rail. But I wanted to show that because I think it's really cool. Um, these are, these guns were built back in the fifties and early sixties. So it's just, it's so cool to still be able to, uh, have them, uh, up and running and, um, take advantage of the quality made in America. You don't, you don't see this type of quality anymore. Uh, a lot of stuff is made overseas and in China now. So these, these guns are just, uh, phenomenal and they're a lot of fun to, to, to shoot and a lot of fun to work on. So Thanks again, everybody. Hope you guys uh, got a lot out of the video and got some good information on the on the rebuild on the 157 today, the Crossman 157. And again, thanks so much for tuning in, watching. And this is Weapons Free signing off. Thank you. Have a great day.